What's up everyone, I'm Chef Joe Sasto, and today I'm gonna to show you how I use this 500-year-old Torquio to make a delicious bowl of pasta, and as a bonus, I'm gonna give you a Madeira cream sauce recipe that you can use on anything. Now let's get to it. I got my bag of tricks here. So we have here a Torquio. This is a solid bronze piece of machinery used to make pasta. 16th century, this is over hundreds of years old and how they used to make all of those extruded shapes of pasta that you're used to eating every single day. We also have our handle. This is going to allow us to clamp onto the top and apply pressure and our die. These come in all different shapes and sizes and they're interchangeable. So depending on which one you have in there, we'll determine what shape of pasta that you end up making. I'm excited to show you how to use this thing, but before we get into that, I gotta show you how to make some pasta dough. We have a finely ground Ramasanata semolina durum flour. We're using all egg yolks for this one. I have a finely ground double zero white flour. And then I have a coarsely ground semolina flour, a little bit of salt, and then we'll just start by doing this all in the stand mixer. You could do this all by hand, but I do like taking some shortcuts when I can. We're gonna get all of our flours into the mixer first, our durum flour, then our double zero, finally our semolina, and a little bit of salt. We're gonna give this a quick mix, and we can go with all of our egg yolks at once, and we're just gonna let this rip. Now you'll notice this dough is gonna be a little different than some other pasta doughs you made out there. It's gonna be harder, a little more dense, and we're gonna add just enough water to allow it to come together, so just a few sprays at a time. I'm using a very old piece of equipment to make the pasta, but I'm using a very modern piece of equipment to make the dough. I like just combining those two different worlds together. We're getting very close here. We can see that it's gotten a little more sticky here. I'm able to squeeze it into my hands and it holds together. This is exactly where I want it to be. We're going to leave it just like this and we're gonna bring it together right on the counter. Squeezing this all together. Now, if you didn't have a machine, this is what the entire process would look like. And I'm purposely forming this into a cylinder so that way it's easier to load into our machine. So our dough is ready to go. This just needs to rest. I like to do that in a vacuum sealed bag. A lot of pasta chefs look down on using a vacuum sealer with their pasta dough. I do not. I like taking this extra step here. It force hydrates the dough and speeds up the resting process. So we're just gonna take our dough log. We will slide it into our bag and then right into our vacuum machine. Like magic. So we have our dough here, force hydrating, resting. We're just gonna set this aside to rest and set up our ancient pasta gadget. You ready for this? So we have all of our pieces here to our pasta gadget, our Torquio, starting with our main frame here. So what we wanna do first is put on our die. In this case, I always like to leave my dye submerged in water, especially when I had used them before, so that way the pasta doesn't dry on the inside. Today, I'm going to show you how to make gargotti. Think of it almost as like a thicker spaghetti or a thinner penne. We'll drop that here into our screw, attach that to the bottom. Then we just wanna clamp this onto our table. Sometimes you need to get a little creative, figuring out how and where you're going to clamp it. I like to use the seed clamps that I have here. And we'll just go under the table. And the other one. All right, we are secure. Last thing here, we have our handle. This will go right on top. And we can open it up, and the dough's gonna go right to that tube. So we have our gadget assembled. Time to load it with our dough. This has been resting only about 20, 30 minutes, not very long at all. If you didn't have a vacuum bag, you probably want to let this rest one to two hours or so. Uh, so it really makes a big difference and speeds up the entire process. I'm probably going to split this up into two batches down into here. We'll just slide that in. We'll throw this on top, attach our handle, and then you just want to get it started up. No, I'm kidding. It's not electric. We're going to go right down, starting to turn this and this is your workout for the day. So you'll tell right when you get to the end, it's not going to turn anymore. The moment of truth 
you can take all of your Poston ribbons, bring them right up, line them up and lay them onto your work surface. Now we just open it back up and we can load in our second piece of dough. Slide that down. So what I really like about this particular shape, the Gargotti, is that there is actually a small hole forming through the center of each of these noodles. And it has this super unique mouthfeel when you bite into it that I absolutely love. All right, so that's done. Look at that. Beautiful. We'll come in with a little bit of semolina flour here so they don't stick together. Now they have beautiful texture on the exterior here. That's gonna help grip our sauce, provide wonderful mouthfeel. So we'll allow it to dry for just a few minutes before cutting them, and that's going to keep that hole right through the center of the pasta. I usually go about an inch and a half. I feel like that gives you real nice texture and length all the way across. Not too long, not too short, but at the same time, you can cut these into small, little macaroni, or you can leave them in really long noodles. So just depending on how you're feeling, you can have a whole variety of pasta just from this one dye. I got a tray here, dusted with just a little bit of semolina. I'm gonna keep them separated. Now we'll get started on our Madeira cream sauce. So we have some cream, we have thyme, peppercorns, some sliced shallots, and Madeira, which is a fortified wine. It kind of tastes like sherry or port. Uh, and then a little bit of vegetable oil to get us started. So in my sauce pot here to get things going, we're just going to start heating up our induction burner. A little bit of vegetable oil down on the bottom. Then we'll come in with our sliced shallots. We want a little bit of sweating, we want a little bit of sauteing. So we got a little bit of action going on here in our pan. Shallots are sweating down. We're not really looking for color here. In this case, I really like some black peppercorns. And then as much or as little time as you have. Today I have a lot of time. You know, if you're short on time, don't be afraid. You can put a little bit of time. We're just going to let that soften. The peppercorns just toast up. Oh, it starts to get very fragrant, aromatic. Our Madeira deglaze with our wine. And we don't need to worry about cooking off that alcohol immediately because we're gonna add our cream and let that reduce during the time. Our thyme is going to infuse. You'd always deglaze with a little bit of lemon juice, works very well. So our sauce base is reduced by about half here. We'll just come in here and strain this. We have our infused cream here and it's gonna be our sauce base. Let's cook some pasta. We're gonna go a little bit of salt in our pasta water. I'm gonna take a moment here just to let everyone know your pasta water should never be as salty as the sea. It should taste like water soup, a well-seasoned stock. We're gonna take all of our pasta now, go down into our water, bring this back up to a boil, throw the lid on for that. So it's been about two minutes. We'll do a little taste test here. Careful, it's hot, don't burn yourself. One color all the way through. You can still see that hole right in the center. Let's bring these guys out. I like using a spider. We'll go into a saute pan, bringing a little bit of that pasta water with us. Noodles back on the heat here. Now we can come in with our Madeira cream sauce. So what we wanna do here is marry the noodle and the sauce together. We're gonna go a little bit of butter here. We just wanna emulsify that butter in. I always like to come in with another splash of raw Madeira. So that way you have a little bit of that cooked off Madeira flavor, a little bit of that raw Madeira flavor coming through, some fresh cracked black pepper. And then we're just gonna swirl this together to emulsify. We'll see this start to thicken up. Reach into your pocket and find yourself a tasting spoon. Don't burn your mouth, love that. I'm gonna kill the heat. Let that carry over. I have a nice big chunk of Parmesan Reggiano cheese I'm going to grate on top. This is gonna add a nice bit of saltiness. It's delicious. Nice big spoonful of our pasta. Look at that. We have some black truffle we're gonna grate on top. Of course, if you don't have truffle or you're not into truffle, you can skip this step, but I happen to love it. 
Truffle Madeira Cream Gargotti. Baby, my friends, look at that. Time for a taste test. Reach into your other pocket. Find yourself a golden fork. Come in, a little bit of everything. Mm. Rich, creamy, satisfying. You would call it old reliable. And even if you don't have this gadget, you could still use the sauce on any type of pasta that you have. Don't forget to tag me when you make it at chef.joe.sasto. Thanks for watching.